Hey guys, I wanted to do a quick video tutorial about how to use colors in the Juice application framework. Um, and if you're familiar with Juice, um, if you're from America, you would have noticed by now that they spell color differently in the Juice application framework. And that's because uh, Juice is developed in London um, and the British spelling, or maybe it's European spelling, uh, is spelled with an O-U. So instead of spelling color like this, um, in juice, it's spelled like color. So um, just remember that whenever you have to write out color, it always needs to be spelled like this. Um, anything referencing the code will always be spelled like that. So I just wanted to say that first. Um, I think the first thing I'd like to show you is how to use the preset juice colors that have already been defined. Um, so here I have the juice, um, the default juice project for a GUI application. Um, and this is sort of uh, some of the functions for the main component, the main um, thing that's shown in the window, basically. Um, and in this paint function, um, we're, we're drawing a background. So we say fill all, and then there's a color listed here. Now, this is a custom color. I mean, I'll talk about those next. But first, I sort of want to talk about the juice predefined colors. So there's a class in juice called colors that has a bunch of preset colors that you can reference and use. So um, I can say colors and then whatever color I want that they've already written. So let's say white um, or white smoke or floral white or Nahova Joe white, <laughs> Navajo, uh, Navajo, <laughs> Navajo white. So let's try that. Um, and that will render a background that is that color. So when I run the program, we're gonna get a background that's Navajo white. Dope, that's pretty cool. Um, now let's say maybe we want it to be white, so we can type white. And so now the background is going to be completely white. And then maybe let's say like, what's a crazy color? I know like maybe like magenta or like um, sea blue. Is there like a sea blue? It looked like there was a sea green. Ooh, dark sea green. Let's try that. So then we're going to get a background that is dark sea green. So basically, um, in the juice documents online, you can just search juice colors. There's a huge list of all the ones they predefined. Black, white, blue, blah, blah, blah. There's a weird one up there. Antique white. Interesting. Alice blue. I want to try Alice blue. Um, but obviously, most people do not want to stick with preset colors. You sort of want to use colors that have, that looks exactly like white to me, but it might have a blue tinge to it. Um, basically, most people will want to use specific colors that maybe the designers have given um, the developers or um, that people specifically want like a certain shade of a color. Um, so next I'll talk about sort of the juice custom colors um, that you can use. So basically, if you're familiar with um, how computers represent colors, um, it's represented in RGB. So the amount of red in a color, the amount of green in a color, the amount of blue in a color. So um, color uh, computers have always represented colors this way because um, each little pixel on a screen actually has the capability of producing red, green, and blue light. And so with different mixtures of that, um, those colors, you can create pretty much any color, or you can create any color. So let's say we have this red rectangle here. Um, and so I'm using this application called Sketch just to d demonstrate some color things. So you see on the bottom, as I move this around, these RGB values are changing. So that's red, green, and blue. Um, and so as I move these around, we get slightly different colors. So let's say we increase the blue and then increase the red, turn down the red, turn up the green, increase the blue. Um, so that's how colors are represented in the computer. Um, you probably already knew that if you're watching this video, but um, they're represented in RGB values. Um, whenever they're written though in code, they're often written as a hexadecimal number. So you have these numbers and letters. If you're not familiar with hexadecimal, I'll do a video on hexadecimal explaining really how um, these numbers work, if you're curious. But 
basically in most graphics applications or most designers will probably hand you a specific hexadecimal color that looks like this. Um, so let's take that real quick um, and I'll create a text thing and then paste that in. Um, so basically you have three pairs of hexadecimal numbers. So or three pairs of hexadecimal digits. So this 35 in this color is actually the amount of red and then this FF is the amount of green and this B5 is the amount of blue. And so we can see that in Sketch as I move around these RGB values, if I'm only, um, the red should only affect these two digits, these 30, this 35, it should only affect those two digits. So as I move R up, you see, um, the first two digits of this hexadecimal number are changing. It only affects those two. So R is those two digits. And then the same with um, the green. So I'm just sort of trying to select this so you can see it. But um, green up and down changes. And then finally B as you move that up and down. Um, so the amount of red is represented by these first two digits. Amount of green, second two. Amount of blue, last two. So. If you are handed a hexadecimal number, the question is, how do I get that into juice? So I'm going to explain that next. So basically, if you want to write any kind of hexadecimal number um, in this format, you have to tell C++, hey, this is a hexadecimal number, not just a regular old like number that everybody does. So like, if I do like 84, this is technically called a decimal number, but if I did F5, that's a hexadecimal number because um, it has, well, I'd have to specify it, but um, an F is a hexadecimal number that means 15, like it's the digit 15. Um, again, I'll do that separate video on hex numbers to sort of explain w what that means. But basically, you have to tell C++, hey, this is a hexadecimal number. And the way you do that is by typing 0x. So if I wanted a hexadecimal number that looked like this, like I'm telling C++ that this number is specifically a hexadecimal number, not just a normal number that's like three, blah, 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 blah. You, you write 0x at the beginning. So to use a juice custom color, you've got to write that hexadecimal representation of that color but at the beginning you need 0x to specify that it is a hexadecimal number so here if I want to use a custom color first you have to declare that you are using a color so it's an object so I want to use the color object and then I'm going to initialize that color object with a hexadecimal representation. So first you write 0x to say this is a hex number and then you grab that hex number. Let's say this is um, that's an ugly color. <laughs> let's do something like I like that color. That's cool. Um, let's brighten it up a little bit. That works. Okay. Um, so let's pretend this is the hexadecimal representation we want. And so then I would just paste that into juice and so I'm saying I want a hexadecimal number that is this value but this is actually not going to work so I'm gonna run it and show you what happens so we get something that is just like gray and super lame but we wanted this so like how in the world did we go from this hexadecimal number to this hexadecimal number that's the same thing, but it's not working. Well, in juice, you also have to specify a fourth field. So y these are all fields, this red field, green field, blue field, and they're all pairs of hexadecimal numbers. But there's also another field called the alpha field, and that's like transparency. So I can sort of show you real quick. Um, Let's pretend I have this black rectangle right here. Let's not pretend. I actually have a black rectangle right here. Um, and then I have this <coughs> like blue rectangle over this. 
as I come over here, there's also, you see this A for alpha, and that's transparency. So at 100 alpha, it is not transparent. You cannot see through that color. But as you bring it down, you can, you see that that color fades away. Um, and it's not fading away, it's just becoming transparent. So as I like move this over here, you can sort of tell that it's acting in a transparent manner. It's just coming over these colors. So juice also requires that you specify that alpha field. Um, so if you wanted a completely, um, a completely solid color, um, you see how A is all the way up here, uh, the biggest value it can get. So you want to specify that the alpha, which is also going to be a, another pair of hexadecimal numbers, you want to make it the highest value it can be so it is not transparent at all. And so the highest hexadecimal number you can get with two digits is FF. So if I come over here, um, juice specifies that the alpha should be the first two digits. So I'll add FF to the beginning and that will be my alpha. And then next comes the R, G, and then B. So I'm just gonna write this in the comment real quick. So this is my alpha, this is my R, this is my G, my B. So now if we run this, earlier we weren't specifying anything about transparency that was legitimate. This 33 was trying to be interpreted as that, but now we're saying we want a completely non-transparent color that is that blue color. So in juice, if you, if you just want solid colors, if that's all you're trying to do, solid custom colors, just always remember that you want to start out with color and then say 0x for hexadecimal and then start with FF so it's a solid color and then type whatever the hexadecimal representation is. So let's say somebody gave you this is the hexadecimal representation this ff4d4d so we're going to copy that and we're just going to paste that after this initial setup so hexadecimal and then alpha completely solid color and then the actual hexadecimal representation that's most common commonly given the rgb um, so now let's actually use that color instead and so it should render. Stop. <laughs> Awkward. So now we got that color that we chose here. So if anybody ever hands you some hexadecimal numbers or if you're trying to come up with custom colors yourself, um, basically, in juice, what you got to do is you create a color object and then you specify 0x that it's hexadecimal and then you write FF to show that it's alpha and then you just paste whatever color that is. Um, so that was a bit confusing for me. I naturally sort of would have thought the other way around that it would be RGB and then A. That's sort of what I most commonly see. Um, I came sort of from a CSS world and in uh, in those coding situations, a lot of times the alpha was at the end. Um, you do like RGBA format. So I've always sort of thought alpha would be the end, but then I randomly stumbled and figured out that F, uh, that alpha is the first two digits at the beginning of a custom juice color. So basically, let's pretend we wanna add a rectangle or something. So we can say filled rectangle and then um, I've got to specify where it's going to go, so let's make it one, I think it's like 275 is what I want, 175, and then width 50, height 50, um, but we're going to set the color for this rectangle before we draw it, so we say set color, and so let's make this, um, let's make it a blue, let's go with something like that, okay. So this is the color we want. So we're gonna copy that. And then again, we've declared a color object. And then now we're going to write zero X to say this is a hexadecimal number, give the alpha, which we want to be completely 
um, solid color and then give the actual color representation RGB. And so now we'll have a rectangle in the middle that's this re uh, blue color that we specified. So that is how colors work in Juice. Um, if that was confusing at all, definitely feel free to comment. I'll try to do another video on hexadecimal numbers sort of to explain that a little more. Um, it'll help your understanding um, with how the colors work in general. Hexadecimal numbers come up in different ways in computer science a lot. So, so I hope that was helpful. Uh, thanks a lot.